This is episode 57. We are talking about planning to peak an archery by Coach Larry Wise. You don't know who Larry is. You don't pay much attention to competition archery. Um, Larry is the head judge for Lancaster Archery Classic, has been since its inception. Larry is a uh, USA Archery Level 4 coach. He is one of the founding coaches of the Junior Dream Team, which is now the Red Team um, for USA Archery. He is a retired, basically, um, professional archer for years. We get into that a little bit. This book is his seventh book. Um, he has been around the game and involved in the game at its highest levels in every capacity possible. No one knows performance and mental game in archery more than Larry Wise um, from all aspects, all inclusive aspects. So check this out. Enjoy the show. And remember, you have a fee to pay. The fee is to share the show. If you thought something was funny, if you saw something helped you or helped someone else, I don't bore you with ads. Share the show. Go in, click share, go to your Instagram, go to your Facebook, go wherever. Share the show. Send it to somebody personally. You got to listen to this. Share the show. Try to help someone. Share the show. And that helps us and all of Bearbell. All right. Thank you so much. Enjoy the episode. See ya. I think then um, anybody I can put a name to to promote our sport. The archer who owns all the world records, John Demmer III. You know, the more difficult a thing is, the more important the mental game becomes. I, I didn't eat any supper yet either. How about you guys? Do you guys eat yet? I didn't eat Oh, that. you know, uh, I have some crunch berries. Oh, yeah. Grayson Parlo. It's like me taking three or four years off your eyes just because I weakened that prescription in the shooting eye. And don't put everything into my shot that I should, that I get a lot of drop on those heavy arrows. It's dropping all the way down. He said, well, you might want to think about going to a lighter arrow in the spring walking. And then that's what got that started. So. I don't see it, Larry. It's not showing up. Um, yeah, yeah lost in space. I know, lost in lost in the ether. I don't yeah. know. I don't. I'm not seeing it at the moment, but I got the book in front of me, so yeah. it's all good. But anyways, all right. Well, I'm on a Larry. I'm on a little bit of a sabbatical from social media right now, and I'm telling you, it actually feels pretty stinking good. <laughs> <laughs> I this is the first time in my life, and it sucks yeah. a little bit with like having a brick and mortar and the podcast and the brand and that stuff like it sucks not being out there with it but at the same time like i'm just something hit me last weekend and for the first time in all, in 20 years since i've been on facebook i have cut the cord Compl all but all but the business like facebook has like a a business mm -hmm. page app that you yeah. can use. Mm -hmm. I, so I can still post like for the Barebell project for Grass Hollow Archery on there, but I can't, you know, I'm not, no personal stuff. Like I yep. deactivated yep. my social media and like, I just needed a mental break from all of the, the stuff. Uh, uh, yes, it's, it's, uh, I, I am counseling myself each week, <laughs> each evening probably. Yeah. To put the phone aside. Well, and that's, and, and that's just, I catch myself yeah. picking up my phone and like my, I'm not even thinking about it. I am subconsciously going to my group of apps what? and I click my Facebook. No, and I know that I'm not logged in. My account's deactivated. Like I can log in yep. and reactivate yeah. it, but. And until I break that habit, I'm not getting back on because I don't, I don't know if people realize how intrusive social media is in your life and how much mm -hmm. that it occupies other things that 
really have no recourse well, or um you know have any that should not occupy space in your brain how much it occupies space in your brain and it and it it really mm-hmm. it affects your relationships with people yeah and and this relates directly to my book it will actually yeah, i guess it will speaking of that's yeah. what we're here for um yeah everyone welcome back to the variable project this is episode 57 with my good friend and mentor uh archery <laughs> coach mr larry wise and we're here today today to talk about this bad boy right here what book number is this how many have you written now uh this is book number seven this is your seventh archery book. That's just incredible. Yeah. I'm still working on number one. Um, well, keep keep at it. <laughs> I, I know, I know. You've mentored me that in that as well. Yes, I'm working keep, on it. So keep like, adding to your list, it begins with a list. I know. It doesn't have to be in order. It's just yeah. things you want to say on a certain topic, and then after you have like eighty of those things listed, it, then you start. You'll start over. seeing how to group them. That's all uh, my goal for this summer um, while I'm off from my day job, well, I'm sort of off. I'm still going to be working through the summer uh, for the school, but is to, is to try to get that book completed. It's a, it's a lofty sure. task. I don't plan to make uh-huh. it very big, but it's, you know, a, a complete barebo related from start to finish book. So we'll see, but okay. Well, uh, I'll I'll be monitoring you that progress. So you have your training plan made. I do have a training okay. plan made. Okay, so it takes. The coach I have to then. juggle that around the honeydew list of house <laughs> oh, projects yeah. that my wife oh, yeah. has me on, and oh, you know, okay. I, I shouldn't I shouldn't say that she has. I'm I have them myself, but so. We have book number seven for, <laughs> for Mr. Larry Wise, the author, the archery author, planning to peak an archery, building mental toughness through mind and body balance and focus control. This book has been um, on Larry's um, to-do <laughs> for list yeah. for some time. We spoke about it many times personally. I even helped yeah. in some certain aspects of the book. The book is out. It's published. It's available and all of the places that it's available will be in the show details of this episode. Larry, planning to peak an archery, four sections that we want to talk about. If we get through them all, great. If not, we do a part right. two. Talk about it, man. What What is the reason that you chose yet to write another book? Well, I when I, <laughs> when I put together my... Uh, coaching book, Larry Wise on coaching book. I was asked to do that one by Steve Ruiz, who published uh, the magazine uh, Archery Focus for a lot of years, right? which is no longer. He ceased producing that last fall. Uh, but he wanted me to put together uh, all my articles that I have written, hundreds, <laughs> uh, for mostly for our trade magazine. Uh, put those together in a form to preserve them for coaches to read. Not that that book was going to sell any great numbers, but he wanted to get it done. Yeah. And he pushed me for a couple of years and I did it. Okay. So I, I said I would never write another book. But, <laughs> um, <laughs> but when I was a senior in high school, I remember telling the the guy behind me said, well, I'm never going to be a teacher. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> and I, I did that for 35 years. I became a math teacher for 35 years. So you got to be careful what to say you're yeah. never going to do. Uh, but in working with the uh, compound uh, junior dream team, our, our national junior dream team program, I was assistant coach. Linda Beck was our head coach. Uh, and we had three, four other uh, people who were assistant coaches that, that we brought on after Linda and I got together. Well, working with those teenagers, very able teenagers, very dedicated, um, communicating mental skills is where we were weak. And I knew that. <laughs> 
I knew that when I wrote Core Archery and had to begin. That was 2003 when I wrote that. And, and uh, the publisher said, well, you, ha you have to have more. You have to have that middle chapter you were talking about. So, and I started, um, started reading and putting together ideas about the mental game. Well, working with these dream team kids, I, I had to come up with a way and working with coaches in, in coaches training, level two and level three, I had to come up with a way to teach the basics about mental game. And so I started working on um, uh, focus and focus shifting, things I learned from Dr. David McDuff, who was the uh, and is the sports psychiatrist for the Baltimore Orioles. And he has his sports psychiatry and, and general psychiatry business down near uh, Baltimore. Uh, very well known. He's worked with uh, football teams, the Colts also. Wow. Uh, wow. But he, his book, um, Sports Psychiatry strategies for does that show uh, up because of the background <laughs> yeah i can't see it yeah the, the background is not yeah not sports good. psychiatry strategies for life balance and peak performance so and in that uh and working with him got to meet him and teach him archery a couple times mm -hmm. uh, but he taught me opened my eyes to see how we shift our focus we're constantly shifting our focus, where we assign our conscious attention. And uh, so um, that I, I worked that into what we were teaching Dream Team Kids. Um, but this was all verbal. And there were a lot of terms that weren't defined. And uh, as a mathematician, you can't exist without defining your terms. And, but that's what coaches were doing. Right. We're using terms like, well, you have to stay focused or you have to keep your head in the game. Yeah. Okay. Well, what does that mean yeah. to a 14 year old kid? A kid? How about adults? Yeah. Well, that's, yeah, that's it. The point, the coach can't define that. Yeah. Well, how's the kid going to know what you're talking about? Uh, or the adult, another adult that you're working with. And um, I had to come up with a concrete way to communicate where to assign our focus and what kind of focus to assign. And uh, because there are, uh, if you read in psychology books, mm -hmm. sports psychology books, you'll find there's, you know, more than four ways, but four basic ways to use your focus. Uh, broad focus, uh, broad external, broad internal focus, and then narrow external, narrow internal focus. And we switch between these kinds of focus constantly during the day. And so what kind of focus do we need when we're shooting an arrow? Uh, which is different than the kind of focus you need just before you step up to the shooting stake at like a 3D target or a field target. Because when you get near that stake, you're using a very broad focus. You're looking at the terrain, the shadows, uphill, downhill, right? The, the weather conditions, wind, which way. So you're looking very broadly at this and then you pull that into a conclusion about how you're going to visualize this shot uh, and, and a sight mark, <laughs> okay? Uh, but once you step to the stake and begin your shooting form steps, you need a different kind of focus. And even in that, you have to make a shift. And so um, that pushed me in the, when, uh, how, how long ago was this? Okay. That was like November of 2018. 
And I realized I had to come up with some sort of a visual chart. Uh, just using words is not enough to get good retention from the learner. Sure. You've got to appeal to all of his learning modes. So I started working on it on a chart, which turned into my focus map, uh, trying to show when we need my manage focus, that's checking things off a list, all right? And when we need to shift to body feel focus, that's where we operate by feel. Some might say that we turn the shot over to the subconscious, but <laughs> your mind isn't blank. No, right. When your subconscious is running physical uh, actions out of your body. Uh, no, you, you are aware of that. And so to, to make the listener here uh, aware, mind manage, checking things off the list. Um, you do that a lot during the day. Yeah. But when you sign your name though, to a check or to a form, you shift to a body feel because you aren't checking off how you make the first letter of your name. And then, okay, what's the second letter? Okay, I got to make it this way. No, you have signed your name so often that it has a feel. You do it by feel. And when you do it five and six times in a row, they all look pretty much the same, these signatures, all right? So you are acting with a focus that I call body feel. You're aware that you're doing it, but you're aware of the feel. And you repeat at your highest level when you're operating that way. That's why your signatures look all the same. Now, if I had you switch to the opposite hand to make your signature, Whoa. <laughs> yeah, things change. Now you're back to mind manage. Yeah. Okay, so how do I hold this pen? If I'm, you know, going to write with my opposite, my left hand. Sure. And then, okay, I, oh, how, how do, oh, I got to make an L somehow. <laughs> and you're checking things off a list. It's very slow, haphazard, uh, <laughs> not smooth and doesn't repeat very well. Right. So, you know, this is this concept and getting it onto a chart, which I've worked with, with you. You've seen the chart, you saw some early stages of it. Yep. And um, so I worked on that for a couple of months and then into early 2019, February, I think, and I thought, you know, with, different articles I've written and this new concept, I have enough to do a book. <laughs> so I didn't Sucker. set out to write it. I just, I realized I had enough to do a book and it needed to be done. So the archers out there can understand just how much the mind is involved in all you do in archery and what the basics are and, and how to uh, use your mind skills in a way to help your shooting. So it was, you know, it's a manual. Uh, coaches can use it, archers can use it to start building, to, to identify what is part of the mental game and to then begin building their own mental game. So, that's kind of a history. Of, and then, then you know, you, you get uh, to a publisher, you know, you submit, uh, <laughs> submit your ideas and a couple chapters to a publisher. Uh, I got turned down once because that publisher had just published an archery book and they didn't want to do another one right away. And, mm -hmm. you know, it was August of 2018. And, 
then I went off on another track and worked with seven or eight other sports and coaches. Um, and all repetitive action sports to find out how they were teaching mental skills uh, with teaching physical skills. And I was shocked to find that none of them worked from a list of steps like we do in archery. Yeah, no. And it's all verbal. Well, and then when you send your athlete home to practice, are they going to practice the right steps or are they going to leave a couple out? Well, if they don't have a list, yep. they're going to go home and say, well, I think the coach said this. So that's what I'm going to do. When, just, just to interject real quick, the talking about the list of steps, when we, when I started the, the Barebow Project seminars, that's yeah. one of the things that we started. And I always started with, well, how many steps do you think you have in your shot process? Oh, yes. And people are like, oh, five, eight, 10, 12. And I just look at people, I'm like, mm -mm. you yeah. have no idea how many steps you actually right. take because you are either not doing, you're not, you don't, you're not trying to repeat a thing. You don't consider it a step or you're just subconsciously doing it and you have no idea that it is a step, you know, yeah. and then we, you know, and, and credit and credit to you that, that notion um, came from you. And I give, every time I talk about it, I'm like, this, this is something I learned from Larry Wise. This is something that he does well, that in his coaching came, and teaching. Came and, from my mentors <laughs> way back, but folks, yeah. Prince of a guy, uh, you know, from uh, out near Pittsburgh and uh, one of our Olympic coaches in the past. And yeah, yeah, you have to, you have to pay attention to the steps. Yeah. That's where it begins. And, and that's where the mental game begins, which. You know, can I, and also from an experience standpoint, I want to share this really quick. I changed my shot process significantly two weeks before NFA indoor nationals. It was working amazing, like best uh, NFA round scores I ever shot. But, and, and I continue. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to stick to it. I wasn't really wor worried about score. I was just like, you know, this is working for me. I am making a long-term decision to stick to this process, both indoor and outdoor, made the switch. Wouldn't you know, practice was amazing. I'm, I'm talking like, on 30 arrows, any at 140s and above on 30 arrows in NFA scoring. And um, went to first practice ends, banging, boom, boom, boom. First couple of ends, great. That quick is soon because that process was not hammered home. Mm -hmm. I switched two steps. And it had a drastic impact on my consistency. And I went back to my old habit. Yeah. I went back to my old habits immediate. And it took me the majority of the weekend to figure it out. Yep. And, you know, and, and not, and I don't regret making the change because I'm still doing shooting that way and it's working great. I yep. just hadn't done it enough. Right. To, for it to be stuck for that process, yeah. for those steps to be stuck. You know, just and just a, it was a change, but I never read. I never made my list. I never rehashed <laughs> that that process. So. Yeah, but go ahead. Yeah, Sorry so, about that. Yeah, so archery begins with a list of steps, a written list, and following it. And, and if you do that, then and, and this, this is a good to point this out at the beginning of our discussion here. Um, one of those steps is the most important. And of course, people say, well, they're all important. Yeah, they're all important. It's all important that you do them right and at the right time. But one of them is most important. And we know that because all the steps preceding that one are designed to set the, more, the most important one, to set that up. They're all prep. And of course, we're talking about transfer of holding into your back and using that holding 
to execute the shot. All right, so that's the most important. And so when I work with coaches from these other sports, uh, particularly about the, the one uh, shot put, and we, I helped them make a list then. We worked on this list of steps and things. And then I said to him, well, um, I can see from all of these steps that this one particular step is the most important. And he said, well, how did you know that? He said, you were only there observing for two hours, observing him working with his student practice. Well, because I know what setup steps are. Right. <laughs> and what they're setting up then has to be the most important. And that, of course, for the shot put is that coming from a low bent knee position and lunging and pushing. Okay, everything else before that step is set up. Uh, anyhow, he has a list of steps now, uh, as, as does the uh, place kicking coach. As he coaches place kicking, punting, and kickoffs. And so I helped him develop a, a list of steps for all of this. And so for the place kicker, what's the most important step? Swinging the leg. Sure. And, and so that has to become then the most important part of the mental game. It's not the ball going through the uprights. No. Right. Because if he's thinking about the ball going through the uprights when he's swinging his leg, yeah. <laughs> he's not getting the best out of his mental game. Yeah. He's thinking in the future about something he has no control over. Because after the ball leaves the foot, he has no control. And after the arrow leaves the string, you no longer have control. So the arrow striking the target should not be in your mind while you're in the holding and, and uh, contract expand step of your archery shot. Yep. If it is, you're thinking about something you have no control over. Yep. You only have control while the arrow's on the string. Yep. So we have to gear our mental game to that. So the most important part of the physical game is also the most important part of the mental game. You're you're preaching to the choir. More <laughs> yes, people I, hear this. I know, I, but well, no, we're we have listeners out here. Oh yeah, uh, and that just you know that gets your mind in the same time zone with your body. Yep. Right I've had people, Millie's. Larry. I've had people you know, um, who are mental game. Well, they not coach, whatever. <laughs> and, you know, and I say, that and, and then, you know, and I see this stuff online and somebody will be like, Oh, I'm having this problem. And they're like, Oh, you know, you need to get a mental coach. I'm like, you can't do mental without doing and addressing the physical. It's not mm -hmm. possible. Both mm -hmm. of those exist in the same world. Both of those rely on each other. And you, that you cannot say, oh, well, my form is perfect. It's just my mental game. No, because if, you're if your form is, is, is not good, your mental game is not going to be good. You can say what you want. You can talk about whoever you want. Mm -hmm. You need to have some repeatability like your steps you need to know what your form is i'm not telling you you have to have perfect form i'm saying that you need to know what your form is and you need to you need to be so committed to that form that it is a right. foundational piece in your mental game okay, and so, so go ahead but anyway sorry sorry to derail no no that that's but that's what that's what uh i run into also yeah uh, and, and it took me, I've read uh, a lot of books, a lot of mental game books. And uh, one of the favorite ones is Zen Golf. Zen, Zen Golf. 
to look oh, yeah. that up. I, I have that one here. <laughs> and it's got many pages. I see that. Tabbed yeah. corners there. Yeah, I see that. Over the years, yeah. Um, okay, so basics. That, that's what we're talking about here. So that's why the first section of my book is uh, forming archery perspective. Yep. How do you see archery? And uh, so the first chapter is, <laughs> well, I have to define some terms. Sure. And uh, you know, what is present process thinking? I know. And, and, <laughs> and right, and of course that we have to have that if we're going to have our mind in the same time zone with our body as we're doing that contract expand step. Yeah. Okay. Got to have that present process thinking. And then what's mental toughness? You know, I have that on a subtitle on my cover, building mental toughness. What is that? And, and coaches are always saying, well, you got to be mentally tough. Well, what is that? Well, that is the ability to think in the present to use your present process thinking despite what's going on around you yep. and despite the high value you place on the moment so there's both external events around you and internal within you that can get you distracted from present process thinking. If you're mentally tough, as you build your mental toughness, you get better at maintaining your present process thinking shot after shot after shot. So that's mental toughness. It's, as, as my mother used to say, stick to <laughs> I like that. Stick to Yeah. <laughs> Stick to it in this. You have to stick at it. <laughs> okay. So I did. And that, of course, now this is what you have to have for writing your book. Stick to it in this. <laughs> yes, I do. You are 100% okay. correct. Okay. I will be doing write that on, a big this on my porch. Put it there in front of Every you. morning. Every morning. I'm going to do it five days a week. And you can quote Larry Wise's mother. <laughs> yeah. I'll, yeah, I'll put a dedication to her in the front of the book, yeah. Mama Wise. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, following the definitions, I outline the five principles of learning archery. You know, principle one we're out there to repeat. That's the basic thing we're trying to do in archery repeat. We want two arrows in the middle. Right. So just like our ancestors 30, 40,000 years ago had to have two or three or four arrows in the deer yeah. to kill. Because those weapons weren't very effective. All right. Better than a spear, but, you know. Um, and then you have to know what to do, how to do it, and when to do it. Yeah. Okay. Um, Thirdly, you have to have the proper shooting objective. When you step to the line and knock that arrow, what do you intend to do? And if you're thinking, well, I'm going to shoot an arrow in the X ring. Well, you're thinking in the future. Yep. <laughs> we, we need to think in the present. And what you intend to do is to load your back and use that to execute the shot. So that's where your thinking needs to be. Not hitting the X or shooting the deer, or for God's sakes, when you're out there deer hunting and at full draw, you don't want to be thinking about hanging this thing on the game pole and, no. <laughs> and gotten it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's no, no way joke. in the future. Yeah, yeah. no joke. Okay. Uh, so having that proper uh, objective for your shot is good. Well, and if you're going to use your back, this is principle four, you better have the right posture. Any old posture doesn't get your back loaded the best, right? 
yeah, slouching. Oh, all kinds of things. Oh and man, you're gonna, thing. you're gonna, you're gonna turn, you're gonna torque up some some trad guys that man they and there's there's coaches out there to teach people to really lean over and get into the shot this way and they have their reasons and and from hunting purpose I can see some of the reasons being valid but you know people people don't like hearing that in the trad world they they're like. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you know, they're they're shooting hunched over and they're doing this stuff and they're saying that it gets them in better alignment. I'm like, no, it doesn't. But you you do you until you doesn't work anymore. No. Yeah, they, they can have their thing. Yeah, uh, I, I'm going to look to the body, the anatomy of the human body to tell me how to shoot our that's what I'm looking to. It's not what Larry says or Frank says, yeah. or, you know, it's well, or the social the media do? or the social media influencers. They say, you know, it's not, it's yeah, you're right. Yeah. I, I'm not the authority here. Mm -mm. I'm, I'm good at learning what the body can do, but the body's the teacher. And, you know, I have a great book over here. It was very expensive. And then it was anatomy trains. Interesting. Uh, the author is Mayer, M-A-Y-E-R, I think is his name. Oh, just picture after picture of anatomy and how anatomy parts link together. Hmm. And, you know, so moving your little finger here connects up the inside of your arm all the way to your chest, pectoralis major. Yep. Yeah little little concepts like that you you have to learn yeah and there's a lot more i have to learn yeah and 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 we have those and i think from a compound side we we have definitely um you know because that's you and i for a very long time you for the majority of your career you know mm -hmm. you realize the significance of of a proper bow hand having that yeah. proper position and not adding yeah. tension into into those areas like you just yeah. said, you, you know, that, that, so if our bow hand, if we have copious amounts of tension in any mm -hmm. finger, but specifically here, and it connects all the way up into here, yeah. mm -hmm. the think about the lot, what the effects are of that. And you don't even know. And how does that yeah. affect your target panic then? You know, yeah, it's un unnecessary tension and, and yeah, unnecessary tension that gets us into a lot of bad yeah. habits and, yeah. and, uh, yeah, but, uh, and, and so back to principles. So the fourth principle is you've got to have good biomechanic posture. Okay. The fifth principle then is how do you build that? <laughs> you yeah. build it by steps. So we get to the steps. Got to have the steps if you're going to get the posture right. And so that's how the book begins. Uh, second chapter is about the building blocks of performance and how when we step to the to the line in the tournament to shoot an arrow, we work through uh, three phases of the shot. You know, all the preparation that gets you to the release of the arrow and you're in control during all of that. Uh, next, the arrow is in flight and strikes the target, or at least we hope so. You're not in control there because the arrow is free flight. And so when you look down to the target, uh, try to keep it simple, you know, you weren't in control as the arrow was flying. So um, only four things happened. I explained those four things. <laughs> you, know, um, you shot well, it landed well. All right. You shot well, it landed poorly. All right. You shot poorly, it landed well, and you shot poorly and it landed poorly. Those four things that happened. Okay. <laughs> and then you get to the third phase of the shot. And really, really critical here. And you're fully in charge of this. You've got to 
respond to that. What is your response to how the arrow landed in the target? And, you know, people decide all kinds of things, you know, and <laughs> a lot of them having to do with their own self-worth. So archers need to read about that. And how do you respond to the four things that could have happened in the target? Uh, and aside from that, what's your character? And how shooting a six on that big colored face does not determine who you are as a person. <laughs> and yeah, so people need to read about that. Yeah. That, that gets, this all goes to your perspective in archery. Yeah. yeah. This, is, this yeah. book is good because it, it combines the coaching aspects with the mental, the, the, the physical biomechanical coaching aspects with the physical discussion or the mental discussion as well. Yes. I think, it, this, and this might be a one of a kind archery book in that regard, um, which I, in my opinion is super crucial because mm -hmm. there's a lot of really good form coaches out there. There's a lot of people yes. are good at discussing the mental, the idea of focus and mental discussion, but like, you know, when you have done the research that you've done on the biomechanical side of, of, and how it affects the body and then how that response affects your ability to be um, mentally into every arrow appropriately, yeah. you know, I, I just, you know, it's just, it's such a, a crucial aspect that is not discussed enough. Right. And, and for coaches, we, we've all known that we're weak on teaching the mental game. And we, we gave it some words, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. um, but we have to do more than that. So I tried to outline basics, you know, just planning a practice session. You know, we, this gets us into the second section of the book then. Yep. Having a plan for your practice session is part of the mental game. So get out your pencil and a piece of paper and make a plan for what you're going to do in today's practice session. And the first thing you do is write down your objective. You know, what am I going to practice this time? You know, what form element, what step of my form am I going to work to improve in this practice session? Yeah, that's mental skills. Yeah. And if you just go out and shoot arrows in a target, how is that going to help you? Uh, well, it's going to help your endurance training. But, you know, if you keep doing what you've been doing, you'll keep getting what you've been getting. <laughs> and you won't get better. <laughs> oh, and that's, I mean, I know this is a Barebo related podcast, but in, oh, in okay. Barebo, and all that, that's all of archery, but in yeah. Barebo specifically, like we got a, that's probably one of the most common things that I see. Like people just keep doing the same thing. And then when you give them a corrective action, they give it three days, they give it a week, they give it a oh, 12 arrows. Yes. And then, yeah. oh, that didn't feel good. It didn't no. feel good. I don't want to do that. And I'm, and I, and, and I run into this with kids too. They hate change. And like, well, <laughs> are you, do you want to listen? And do you want to improve? Because if you want to improve, you need to yeah. embrace good change, even when it doesn't feel perfect. Oh, oh yeah. Well, yeah. So the young ones need to, to know how they learn. And of course, as a teacher, I know it takes repetition. All right. Uh, stick to itiveness <laughs> from my mother again. Yeah. And so you try to reinforce that. No being possible. You froze. Oh, so, there you go. Well, the header for, for one of these sections is uh, uh, I have a motivational <laughs> quote on 
on the header pages for each section. And one is old ways won't open new doors. Old ways won't open new doors. Won't I open like new doors. I yeah. like it. Very simple, yeah, but it conveys a very big, big idea, big concept. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so setting goals for yourself is another part of the second section of the book. This is part of your mental game. And, you know, getting somebody to help you, you know, if you're new at this, you know, having a coach or somebody that has some experience of writing goals is important. Writing them, you know, getting them on a piece of paper, you know, just saying, well, I want to shoot better. That's not a goal. That's, that's a wish. Okay. A dream. Yeah. Okay. Um, but saying something like, uh, I'm going to use a relaxed bow hand on each of my 60 arrows in today's practice. Now, now we're starting to get a goal. All right. We're getting some good measurable ingredients in there. We're getting a time factor in there. And uh, so that's part of the second section of my book, describing how to write goals. And uh, well, there's, there's so much <laughs> writing training plans. You know, so you, you want to do, you have a big tournament in, in, in August. Yep. Well, what are you going to do each day between now and then to get ready? Do you have a calendar with things written on it that you're going to do? I do, but it in includes pencil. writing a book. Yes. Well, <laughs> yeah, but that's good for your mental stuff. That keeps you on your mental game every time, every morning when you sit down to write. See, I was a morning guy. I, yeah. I'm, I'm a morning thinker. Me too. Yeah. And so I, I got up from the breakfast bar, walked a few feet across the living room and sat down at my computer every morning and wrote. Yeah. Mm. And, and you can do that. So, you know, if you have your, you're writing a list of topics, things you want to say, then you, you begin getting them in order. Yep. And pretty soon you have an outline of a book. And then you have this list of topics you're going to write about. And then so each topic has some notes to it. Each of those notes is a paragraph. <laughs> you turn them into paragraphs. Right. And so when you sit down, you, you're not sitting down to write a book. You're sitting down to write three paragraphs about the bow hand. Yep. Much easier to do. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's, that's, that's why a, the outline is that so is critical. Such a, that is such an easier way to think of it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and so we do the same thing with our shooting form. Now today, today, in the next three weeks, I'm going to work on this bow hit. All right, and I'm going to do that blank bail. That's you know how you practice. Close your eyes yeah. because we want to get it to feel right. You know, Larry. Then we can repeat the feel. Yeah, my yeah. my my infatuation with Blind Bill from you comes from you because when we started the whole Barebow project thing, like the idea of Blind Bill was almost foreign to the vast oh, yeah. majority of Barebow shooters because there was this notion that well, it's not going to help my target panic. And I'm not saying that it necessarily <laughs> helps your target panic, but it helps your shot process and your, com your commitment to your shot process and the feel of your shot process. So, you know, right. definitely not a cure for target panic. And, but it was just so well, there, like, like, no, there's, why there should we no do cure. that? You know, there and is no cure. Boy, has that, yeah. we we've changed that dynamic a little bit with, showing yeah. the reason the, the how and the why right. you know and yeah. and, I, um, the, and for everyone who listens to the barrel project like that's traced 
that traces back to you because oh well that from fail, from me from my fail from comes me. from yeah well sure yeah absolutely i i, I mm. get it i'm just saying like that's that's the carryover from your teachings mm. i mean how long have you been coaching larry oh since oh 93 or four i was asked to take the level three course and go up to lake placid to you take so a part in that. 93 you started coaching but you were competing at the professional level prior to that oh yes from 78 on yeah yeah okay that's what i was trying to get at like how long you've been involved in this game like i don't people know oh, your well. face as the judge at the lancaster archery classic often they don't realize the in-depth association oh, yeah. to sport that you have outside of that and that's what i want people to know like we're not just talking to another coach we're talking to someone who has <laughs> been in the game as a professional has been in the game as a as a coach at the national and international level for many many years and someone who has been involved at the highest levels in other ways such as the lead the the director of judges at the lancaster archery classic and everything else so I want people to understand the full scope of your involvement and experience in the sport. We're not talking. You see the best of the best compete in those moments of high personal value. Right. Literally have the best seat in the house and have since, since the inception. Oh yes. I'm, I'm right there. It's, it's exciting. <laughs> yeah. So the stuff that you're writing about, you're not, you're not just writing about it from a coaching experience. You're not just writing about it from, a shooting a shooter experience you literally have the best seat to watch the best in the game compete okay. at the highest level outside of the olympics mm -hmm. yeah yeah um in doing in doing that being there boy you've got to stay in the present with what's going on oh yeah um because you know the shooters get so intensely focused in what they're doing, and I have to make sure that when I step up between them, that they know who's going to shoot first and who's going to shoot second. Because their minds not on that. We're talking about the shoot offs. Yeah, the shoot matches that... at the Lancaster Archery Classic right now. Yeah. That's what we're talking about. Standing up on the shooters and and Barbo is familiar with it. The Barbo views on Lancaster's YouTube page is through the roof. Oh yeah, yeah. But you know, it's the loudest that arena is is for any of the shoot offs. <laughs> yeah, which is great. Shooters standing great. up on platforms. You know, cameras coming by. You know, uh, by their faces, mm. microphones in their face. You know all that stuff and then you know so you witness it literally firsthand yeah but i have to be conscious of what's going on and um so that nothing goes wrong and so the shooters don't have to worry about that <laughs> because they're and they need to be intensely focused on what they're doing and you know boy we see the best archery in the world going on right there. Yeah, it's really, really neat. <laughs> yeah. Like I think back to, well, what if I would have, what if I could be up there when I was shooting in my prime? Yeah. You know, how would I fare? <laughs> and I was in, in some really big shoot offs too. Sure. But one some, didn't win some. Yep. And you have to be okay with that. We, we've derailed from talking about sex yeah, yeah. a little bit, but <laughs> yeah, we it, did. that's fine. It's, it's all, yeah. it's all in good. It's all, it's yeah, that's all good those, uh, information. you know, shooting in those moments of high personal value. Okay. So that, that gets into section three. Well, <laughs> so let's not let, we'll we didn't back finish section two. So let's, yeah, let's, yeah. let's finish. Uh, let's 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 do let's do this let's finish section two we're yep. already yeah an we're hour into, into this, this discussion yeah. wow so let's let's finish section two and then we're just going to plan on a second episode to to yep. section three yeah. section four 
and, ha and um, finish the discussion. Yeah. Yeah, another uh, important part of chapter of, of section two is what kind of practice do you do when you get to the tournament site? Yeah. And I know what I did, my buddies did early on. You know, we just shoot a lot of arrows, you know, we shoot, you know, we got to shoot a whole practice round, you know, because tomorrow's the big day and uh, oh, wow, you know, we shoot, 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 shoot. And, well, that one didn't go well. I'm having some problems here. And we got to shoot some more. And after a while, I thought, this is stupid. I'm not, I'm not getting myself ready. I'm not in a good frame of mind for the big day, you know, and shooting that first round of the indoor, like Vegas. And so I changed what I did. And I started focusing on getting started. That's a, that's the toughest part of the first scoring round at like nationals, indoor nationals or Vegas. Yeah. Getting started. So there are certain things that you can focus on when you have your two official practice ends. And though if you do that right, you'll move smoothly into your first scoring in the first cup and uh of course back in the day we had no practice there was no place to practice at the indoor tournaments and so <laughs> you only got six hours to warm up at vegas and you, I mean, you had to be ready to go yeah we even took the shooting hours into a phone book in the in the hotel room i never told that story <laughs> on the podcast yeah <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. you you layered them right did you layer the 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 layered them or sh just well yeah them? well if you had two but that was always felt because you know you can shoot like if you hit the same hole in the milwaukee phone book three times in a row you'll be coming out the back yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> anything to get warmed up but anyway you had to be ready so what what you do in the way of practice at the tournament site uh, can really benefit you all right and it's not shooting a whole practice round and then missing one or two and thinking my god you know i gotta shoot perfect tomorrow well that's thinking in the future oh yeah thinking in the future and and very counterproductive so there's things you can do to help yourself there and then um what about the hour before you start shooting at the tournament yeah. do you have some plans for things you're going to think things you're going to do what kind of physical warm-up are you going to do what kind of mental thoughts are you going to have to help you warm up? Uh, and, and this is where a list of positive self-talk statements comes in. If you don't have a written list of positive self-talk statements, then you're lacking. And that's so easy to do. Yeah. So easy to write some down and and you know get together with two or three friends and brainstorm some so yeah. so self-affirmation positive self-talk statements yeah you're talking about i will statements not like uh, yeah. i am going to not you know because that's there's still a negative connotation to that there's still a, a level of questioning am i going to be able to do this by saying it that way like i will like you know i will i, I yeah, I am. Yeah. Yep, okay. I am. Yeah, I, well, I am. I am fully prepared because of all the practice I did. And I'm, I feel good about my shooting today. Yeah. All right. I'm, my physical training has me in good shape. So my pulse and respiration are under control today. Yeah. 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 Just to give some examples, people can figure it out from there and we don't have to go too in depth with that, but no. you know, people think like I will shoot a 10 is, is a, is a 
um, a, a cell, a positive self statement. It's not, it's, it's actually thinking it's in the future, future thinking. and yeah. you don't, you, you don't say I will shoot a 10. I will shoot this. That's not the same. It's I will mm -hmm. have 100% back tension right. at full draw. <clears throat> I will yeah. let the tip of the arrow float in the middle. I will maintain control of my shot. I will, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. uh, or, my, you know, so just to, just to, you know, I want to yeah. break that or down. Say, uh, you know, I, I will be, or I am loading my back on every shot mm -hmm. and letting the point float. Yep. Yeah. That's, my shot <laughs> okay um yeah okay then um that's the hour you know like from one hour to go until five minutes to go okay so what do you do the last couple of minutes before you step to the line to shoot let's say we're in an indoor tournament you know well what do you say then what do you do physically uh breathing skills come into play here Several, uh, and I outline several different kinds of breathing that you can do. All right. Um, yeah, so the self talk and the breathing, that'll get you right up to the time when you step to the line. Okay. Now it gets critical. And, and this is the part where uh, most people say is the mental game. Yeah. You know, but there, there's so much that comes before that. Yeah, but now we're into the, you know, shot making mental game, and so this is where uh, I have the focus map work, which is a section four of the book, really. Yeah, but uh, you need to know when to use mind manage focus and when to use body feel focus and when to shift. Uh, that's what you do during the shot. Uh, a mantra is helpful here. Sure is. A mantra that connects to your backloading. Because that's the most important thing you do as an archer. Yep. And you need some mantra to remind yourself of that. You know, if you're knocking the arrow and recite your mantra, I'm going to load my back, going to load my back, or whatever it happens to be. Yeah. Uh, and the, the last chapter of uh section two is about shooting beyond target pain yeah i don't get into the curing target panic it ain't going to cure because if you go back to the old habits you'll have it yep. <laughs> you'll still have it yep. you have to form new mental habits new mental thinking and new physical habits yep. And uh, if, if you don't do the new physical, if you don't attend to the posture so that you can load your back, then you're not going to be able to focus on back loading or holding. Yeah. And that has to come first. That, that has to become the most important thing in your mind. And then we can get beyond target panic issues. Yeah, we yeah. divide we devise new physical actions focused on the back, and then new mental thinking thought processes to go with it. Yep, you replace bad habits. You can only get rid of bad habits by replacing them with good ones. Yes, you. They will extinguish when you kindle a new habit. Yep. 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 Firing and, up a new habit extinguishes the old. Sure. And then the target panic discussion, I mean, it comes up all the time and, mm -hmm. you know, and, and there's, there's a lot of discussion in the barebell world about, you know, a triggerless shot versus a triggered shot where people are shooting grip sears and tab sears. And they're like, and what they're doing is they're just effectively holding and they're, they're adding tension into the shot in a different area that puts the thumbnail mm -hmm. off of a tab or, and in, and in some regards, it does work. It, 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 it changes your focus away from the other stuff and you're focused on that thing 
but you're it's almost counterproductive in some ways because you're adding tension like we talked about which is yeah. discussed in this book so you should probably read it people and and you're adding tension in another way so you're mm -hmm. you're you're kind of you're you're implementing a fix and reinventing the problem and well a temporary fix yeah temporary <laughs> fix because sooner or later that will short circuit as well in some regards you know mm. it can maybe you can use yeah. it i know they're like i know there's um i've talked pretty extensively with martin Odison, who is uh, you know been involved in the barebow world he's a great shooter he's from over in europe i'm not sure if he's in denmark or Mm -hmm. where he's at over there but he's in one of those sweden maybe or something <laughs> um and you know and he he has used not an actual seer i think he uses it in a different way just more along the lines of like a reminder you got mm -hmm. a hole you know and and but he's been shooting for i don't know 20 30 years and has shot amazing scores but he admitted he he openly admits that when you add those things in, like it com becomes easier to shoot maybe a little bit more consistently, but you will never reach full performance potential mm -hmm. until mm -hmm. you get rid of all of that negative stuff, like the negative tension and all that and, and really focus. Mm -hmm. It just takes a higher level of practice and, and, and some very dis specific dedication to your, to the oh, yeah. Wall, you yeah. know, stuff like that to shoot that way. So, but yeah, each, each style of shooting, has its challenges sure and yeah with the bare bow yes getting into hold and building through the hold to release that is the challenge yep yeah. yeah sure i've seen it so many <laughs> times you see you see shooters shooters have a big creep they have you know some wild bow positions full drawn positions uh you know they, mm -hmm. and and you can see shooters who shoot really really well um it might last six months it might last a year but sooner or later um we be i see most often shooters become complacent with that's the way i shoot this will work forever then the short circuit happens then it's no mm -hmm. longer working with such ease and we fall into, and then so that all of that negative biomechanical yeah, gets another bad habit produces that, and that's how target panic yeah. starts. Mm -hmm. And then, then you have to climb back out of that hole, and and, and that's where where I I see shooters get stuck. They're like, well, I shot this way for a year and shot some of my best scores. Why should I change? And 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 the and it's and and then we we also call that there's there's a discussion about barebo has like a honeymoon period you have someone hits a stride and they can stay in that honeymoon period and it varies for some people it's a couple of months for some people it's it's a year maybe more it just depends mm -hmm. on their dedication the amount of arrows they shoot mm -hmm. you know there's that honeymoon right. period and and then that can go away real fast and things go south i mean i've gone through it myself in some ways didn't understand a lot of, so, you know, as oh, I've yeah. gotten through barebow and start understanding more of the nuances of it and, and the thing, you know, and, and the importance of string blur and doing some other things and where, and, and you realize like, it's, we don't realize like guys like John Demmer and Grayson and some of these other guys, Eric Johnson's the guys that stay at the top of their game and do it for so long you don't realize how much trial and error has gone into that and how much volume they've shot over the years that has built them up to be, to build mm -hmm. their oh, game yeah. up so high that it doesn't take much for them to get it back, but to stay at that level of competition. Grayson in some ways is a little bit of an mm -hmm. anomaly because he can go out for two years and not touch a bow barely and then come back. But with some very specific shooting he can get right there he's not at his highest level but he's still bad he's still yeah. better than 99.9 percent .9 of the people in, in barebow and yeah. you know like and then people are like well I, you know i want to shoot that way and they don't understand 
like Grayson is very good. Like you're talking about that establishing like the hold and the decision-making process. Like Grayson is so good at that. And we, we've talked mm. about it extensively. Like he does not give himself permission to move on into the shot. And to get to that point where he's even remotely allowed to think about letting go until like that hold is done. And that takes very specific effort and training to do, but mm-hmm. that's, and that's, that is shooting beyond target panic. That, that dude looks like he has zero target panic all the time. And that's, I know that's not the case and, and he'll admit that, yeah. but <laughs> wow, Larry, that's, okay. that's, that's more than an hour into, into your Boy, yeah, first say. two sections. We didn't even get to section three adjusting your archery attitude and section four engaging your mind through focus mapping oh, yeah. we didn't get to that yet yeah but that's okay we will there. good stuff okay we're gonna do a part two to this sir um we will post all of the links to mm-hmm. your on to your online sales to you know like i think it's on amazon right yes it's up on amazon your uh, website choice.com is the publisher yeah it's there uh lancaster archery has it yep watch lancaster i, archery. I think you're going to be doing a uh, uh next short next segment with wednesday PJ. i'm going to meet with pj we're going to do a video uh interview about the, the uh, book for lancaster archery it's a new product for them uh, so, so you, can, you can go to our sponsor lancaster archery and you can get larry's book right through lancaster themselves i'll link i'll, yeah. I'll link that up as well um and then what we're yeah. going to do is we're going to do a part two um we're going to talk about the last yeah. two sections talk about maybe some of again uh, uh, you know applying it to to some of the bare bow discussion and mm-hmm. i think you should and watch for some future stuff from larry in regards to um you know some audio versions and stuff like that so yeah i gotta gotta get busy on that now that the book is out i you know i didn't want to start that before the book was out maybe yeah. i should have but i i just without the book hey. I, you know i i mean i i was thinking about doing that myself but uh with your yeah. book but we'll we'll let we'll We'll save that and, and let you yeah. do that for your own. Well, we'll see what we can do. Work work together, whatever. So okay. all right. Well, thanks, Larry, for joining us. And well, thank uh, everybody you. check, make sure you check back for part two. Where can where can people follow up on you, Larry? You have your own website and stuff like that. Do you want to give yep. us that information? Larrywise.com. Easy enough. Cut and dry. All right. Easy thanks enough. everyone. Thanks for watching. Um yep. and Larry, we're gonna sign out. Peace. See you guys. Peace. Yeah.